What's up, everyone? Welcome into Mikey's boardroom. I'm Mikey. I'm Chris. And we're going to review The Fog. The Fog is currently live on Kickstarter right now. I believe it's raised around $20,000. And That's so, more than last time, huh? Like um, that you told me. Yeah, yeah. They've gotten, last time I think it was around 18000 So yeah. yeah, so relatively low funding. They were nice enough to send us a copy. We were sent this for free. We weren't, there was no other money payment or anything. So thanks for sending it. And we're going to review it. So first, let's talk a little bit about how you play The Fog. In the fog, you're playing as a bunch of villagers. You manage villagers that are escaping a tropical island. There is a fog that is swallowing the villagers up as it comes closer and closer to the shore. So they're racing to the shore, trying to get onto the boat so they can leave and get to safety. There are three boats, blue, green, and red, and also three colors of villagers, blue, green, and red. If you get the blue villagers on the blue boat, green on the green, red on the red, you get more points, but it's not uh, it's not required. You can save other villagers on the other boats. So you're trying to get those villagers onto the boats and you have a specific amount of move set or you have a set of moves that you can do. You can move one spot adjacent to you. You can squeeze, you can hop, you can step on an obstacle and move again. There are different move moves that you can take and different move values for those moves. You have a pool of seven moves and those moves will cost anywhere from one up to four. You have to manage those moves to move your villagers towards the shore and escape the fog. Uh, the fog starts moving uh, three, three or so rounds into the game. The fog actually starts moving up the beach and so it will swallow your villagers and you'll lose points if you lose villagers to the fog. Uh, the villagers also have a special skill and the skill equates to one of those moves. Basically, they can use one of the special moves that normally costs three or four move points and they can use that move for about two move points. So you can save move points in the long run as you play the game, if you're not utilizing those special skills, you're not going to get the most out of your villagers' moves and you're going to lose some to the fog. So the game starts out with a draft and each team goes back and forth and they draft the villagers that are on the beach. So you're looking at the color of the villager versus the boat they're next to, the special skill that they have, what is around them, and you're drafting which villager you want until all the villagers are gone and then the game begins. So let's start with talking about the draft things we liked and didn't like specifically just about the draft since that's sort of the first part of the game. Sort of? Sort of. Oops. It's sort of the first part. Okay. Um, so what I did like about the draft is that it added a strategic element to the start of the game and trying to pick, like I said, where you're going to where you're going to put those, mm -hmm. pick your villagers so that you can match the colors up with the boats and utilize their, their uh, special talent or whatever to, mm -hmm. to move on to the boats. So I liked that it added another little strategic puzzle right at the start to kind of figure mm -hmm. out. I agree. It does add strategy because you can even look at the special abilities on the token thingies and like place them, you know, like pick one specifically next to ones that go with the special effect. Exactly. Like this, yeah. this field, this red villager might be, you know, a little bit behind, mm -hmm. but it's got a discounted squeeze and it can squeeze right mm -hmm. through and be right in the front. So yeah. I get what you're saying. So there's thought going into it and also like, Picking ones which colors match the boats closest to them. Mm -hmm. So there can be a lot of strategy yeah, that goes into there. it. Far more than I like. <laughs> but if far you like than... strategy, <laughs> I'm more of just give it to me and I'll do my best. <laughs> Randomize it. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what I like. Um, okay, yeah. I, overall, I'd say that I did like the draft. If di it, What I didn't like about it is it feels a bit clumsy. <laughs> Because um, you you lay out all the villagers on the beach randomly, and then you have your little discs that you one by one pick which one you want. So you take up the villager and you put your disc on it, and put it back down. And so it feels a little bit clumsy. And about halfway through the draft, I'm just kind of like, I don't really care anymore. I'm just, it gets I'm just old. getting. I just want to get it over with. It's not that it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. It's just redundant. It's just over and, and over. And, and, and it's kind of over overdone by the time you're. There's halfway just through so it. many villagers. There's a lot. So <laughs> I, my my um, solution to that because I try not to. I, I, all my cons, I try to have something that in my mind would solve mm -hmm. it. Uh, my solution to that is that rather than setting them out and then drafting, you put them all in a bag and you pull out, everybody pulls out one and that's your villager and you put the disc on mm -hmm. it and you get to actually pick where you want it on the, mm -hmm. on the board. Now, the, the downside of that is the first like two, the first two rows are all going to be matched colors because we're just going to be yeah. matching up the colors. So I yeah. guess that takes out that whole random element. So I don't yeah. know. That would change the game. So ignore. I'm not a game developer. I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, I don't think. I just know what I like. I don't think it's um, repetitive enough to like be significant. Yeah, like, it's, it's very short. Knockdown. That's not the whole game. Yeah, yeah like you're right. A, 
yeah, like a point for me at all. It's just something I personally you're am not a huge right. fan of. Yeah, you're absolutely but right. But it's pretty insignificant in regards to gameplay. <laughs> and on that note, let's move on to gameplay. <laughs> So the, the core pu- the core gameplay, the core puzzle is really, it's at the, the heart of those move sets, utilizing those move sets to get your villagers, you know, between other, your opponents, around <laughs> obstacles, over obstacles, and like I said, utilizing those special talent to make the most out of those move sets that you have, or the move points you have available. Mm. So that's the core puzzle, and that's the core of what this game is, is managing your villagers, racing to the boats, trying to be the first ones to the boats. Uh, you get bonus points for being the first ones to the boats and the point values go down as you get there. So mm-hmm. it encourages getting there first and getting there first multiple times. You want to get there first, second, and third, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what we found when we played is that doesn't really matter because you still beat me even though I had yeah, like most We of did them. pretty good. We did pretty good escaping mm-hmm. the fog mm-hmm. and getting all of our people on the boats, but that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes you yeah. have to lose to the fog and if I had lost just a couple of the fog, you would have won. That's true. So, that's true. Um, so yeah. Um, so that's the core game. So, so let's talk about what we liked and what we didn't like about that core kind of core puzzle and what this game really is. Um, I at the heart of this game, I like the core puzzle. I think it's fun trying to utilize the most of your moves, the most of the, the specific villagers' special, unique mm-hmm. um, discount or unique power mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, I like comboing them. Yeah, I like the combo of it, kind of like just trying to solve how do I get this black over mm-hmm. here away from the fog. I say black because I always play this the black and blue yeah. color. Um, like how do I get this, my, my, how do I get my villager, you know, around your villagers? I like trying to solve that puzzle. Yeah. And there's always, like it always feels like there's a way to do it. Like it always feels like, like there's always ways to swap or manage. You can, yeah. there's always a way to get where you want to go. Yeah. Um, within like, within reason. Like if there's always a way to move that, that specific piece a couple of spaces away mm-hmm. if you want to. So it's kind of fun solving that. Um, I don't really think it's fun, but I can see why it is. Why I enjoyed it? Yes, I can see why people would enjoy it. I just personally don't really like strategizing. In, in, in that way? It was a little yeah. too mechanical for you, right? Yeah, I guess so. And also, I mean, it made it better, but like the timers just made it move. Like I just was like, screw it. I'm not. I'm not working the, anything. I was gonna talk about the timers. Yeah, which the timers made it better because the first time we played it, we didn't do it with the timers. Yeah. And so I, I definitely enjoy it with the timers. I would not get rid of them. The timers, but out. because of the timers. I just screwed the, the comboing. Yeah. I was like, whatever. And I just did whatever I wanted. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> so I just, I don't know, the comboing That's why, in my opinion, the me. timers add fun because to this, this game, um, well, I'll talk about the timer. I'll talk about the timers later. But to me, like the timers are a necessity for me yes. in this game. Like I would never yes. ever want to play this game without the sand yes. timers, um, the way it is. But my point was just that the comboing yeah. is kind of useless for okay. me. Um, my other big pro that I liked besides like kind of the core puzzle was at the end when you're trying to get on the boats and steal the, mm-hmm. the, like, the prime boat positions from your from mm-hmm. your opponents. I liked that part. That was probably my favorite part of the whole game. I actually game, liked that too. Is trying to get, get mm-hmm. on the boats and get there before you. That part of it... Um, is by far the best in my opinion. I agree. Yeah. I like that too. And taking them like, cause you can't like the spots. You taking know? you <laughs> taking my spots. So yes. Yeah. yeah. Just being like, well, he can't do this boat now because yeah, I took exactly. all those spots. Especially <laughs> when I've moved up the dock and it's yeah. like that's the spot I'm going for. Oh, and no, it's use, not. And then it's like you summit like you're like I'm using all my move points to just go yep. up and take them. It's like no. <laughs> so yeah, that that is probably my yeah, favorite. Yeah, that's part the too. best part of this game is the boat puzzle. Mm-hmm. Once you get those move sets, like. Because once you get to the to the beach and on the boats, you lose all the special moves, and you can swap, swap villagers with another villager next to it, or you can just move adjacently to one. So those are the only two move sets available. So using those two move sets to try and screw your opponent over and take yeah. those best spots is um, I said it enough now. It's the best part <laughs> of this game. <laughs> um, okay, so those are my two big pros: the core puzzle, the core mechanics, I guess, and then the um, the the boat puzzle. Do you have anything else you want to say before I move on? Things I didn't like. Um, let me think, let me think. You do this and you do this. And you do this. Does that help you think? No, it doesn't. You're supposed to go like this at the same time. No, I'm supposed to go like this. This thing. Oh, this thing. For the poor. This thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, so my my biggest problem with this game, and all most of my cons kind of are just a byproduct of this big con, is that it's a bit repetitive. Um, you're mm-hmm. kind of like, you have those move sets. And it's fun to use those move sets to move your villagers. Mm-hmm. And it's fun doing the boat puzzle on it and escaping the fog is fun too. I'm mm-hmm. um, like trying to screw you over and get leave you in the mm-hmm. fog while I get out of the fog. Um, that's all fun, but like 
you have six or so moves that are available to you, and so your turn is kind of like swap, hop, move, one, I'm done. Your yeah. turn. You do the same thing. You know, squeeze, squeeze, yeah. done. So hop, move, jump over, done. And so yeah. it's like it really that's what it is over and over and over again. So the, yeah. like when I say the best part of the game is the boats, uh, getting on the boats, that's also the, the end of the game. <laughs> so like you're playing along, trying to move along the beach and yeah. moving up the beach is the part that gets kind of re- uh, repetitive. Mm-hmm. Um, it is like when we play with the sand timers and that makes it, the sand timers make it kind of, kind of gives it, elevates it to that kind of like, you, there you basically don't have much room to think or much room to escape. Mm-hmm. But the sand timers are still a little bit too slow in my opinion. I think that if they knocked, I think they're 30 second timers and I think if they were 20 second timers, that'd be perfect. Um, cause 30 seconds, like, you know, 20 seconds is enough to decide how I'm going to spend my seven move points, um, for that color. So I think that if they cut it down a little bit, it would kind of add a little bit more intensity where you're trying to, you don't have much time to think you don't have much to like make a mistake, you know, you lose it to the fog then like, that's mm-hmm. kind of how, like, in my opinion, that's, mm-hmm. that's what makes this game fun is not a lot of time to make mistakes. And yeah. if you do make a mistake, you lose a villager to, sp- to the fog, because if everybody has enough time to sit there and analyze it, mm-hmm. it's not hard to escape the fog and everybody's going to lose it probably a couple at the beginning and maybe in the middle and maybe a couple at the end um but for the most part it's not too hard to outrun the fog yeah i agree anything you want to add to that where do you feel like you started at one spot and ended at another did i yes i was just voicing my thoughts (laughs) i was fine so i was just trying to like think about what you (laughs) touched on um i like the timers I, said, I think it added an, like a whole other point to the game for me, yeah. throwing the timers in there. Yeah, if it wasn't for the timers, <laughs> this game would, like, without the timers, I would not want to play this game. With the timers, yeah. I'd, I'd probably be willing to play yeah. this, keep continuing this, playing this game. This this game is, um, it's engaging, and it keeps my, it, like, it keeps my, mm-hmm. my attention, um, but I would like a little bit more, uh, like, like, too Meat. Many. Yeah, a little more meat, but... It's, it's engaging, and it's, like, if you wanted to play it, I'd be like, okay, yeah. sure. The nice thing about the sand timers, too, is that it makes it quick. Like, it keeps you yeah. on your turn, so people aren't just sitting there. It doesn't there. drag. Like, it doesn't drag. Like, it's yeah. over fairly. Like, it's going to be in the lower end of that play of the play time yeah. if you're using the sand timer, because it gets you on your, t- like, it, yeah. it makes you, like, step two mm-hmm. and, and solve it. So, like yeah. I said, sand timers are essential to this essential. game. Essential. <laughs> uh, For sure. So, like I said, the biggest drawback for this game is how repetitive it is. And as I said earlier, I don't like presenting a con without something to, mm-hmm. in my opinion, that might fix that con. Um, and I think scenarios would go a long way in this game. Uh, mm-hmm. If you had like a deck of cards that I agree. would trigger like lava, like a volcano erupts on this island. And so mm-hmm. this these sections of the board are now flowing with lava. Everybody loses their villagers there and you can no longer move there. Mm-hmm. Um, and that could like, you know, all but cut off a boat, except for like maybe one path onto it. Like mm-hmm. something that could change up the map um, mm-hmm. or like, like the fog maybe moves like three steps this turn and then waits for the tracker to catch up to it. So three mm-hmm. quick steps and then it stops for a long time. So you lose a bunch of villagers, but then you have time to yeah. kind of... Yeah, that's true. So just like I things agree. things that kind of change things up there. We're yeah. not really sure what to expect next, where it's kind of like, like yeah. do I yeah, try... Yeah, because I feel like I get comfortable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You get com- like, do I want to... Something that would make me go, do I want to get that premier spot on the boat yeah. or do I want to move this villager back here? Because as it is, I can look and say, the fog's not coming for another yeah. three rounds. I'll take spots on the boat and then mm-hmm. if, and then I'll start worrying about this when it's going to yeah. happen. But if something, if I draw a card and it says, the fog moves three times yeah. or or like or like like the fog fog monsters attack and kill everything in front of the fog. Yeah. I don't know. Like I'm just throwing random stuff out. Something, yeah. something to kind of change it up. I'm, I'm, I'm rambling now. Something to change up the gameplay yeah. a little bit. So that's not just so repetitive. Cause like I said, the core game is fun. Yeah. It's just over and over again. By the time you're kind of done with it, you're, you're done with it. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that besides, besides, yes? <laughs> besides, besides yes. No, I mean, I agree. I think it just needs like a little something like it's not lacking much. It's mm-hmm. just, it just needs, it needs a that. It something. needs like a, an. Ex- it just to me, yeah. it's a game that needs that essential expansion that kind of yeah. elevates it to that next level. I don't know exactly mm-hmm. what form that takes. Could be scenarios. Could be something else entirely. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Yeah. There you have it, folks. Okay. Um. One other con I wanted to say. This is a prototype. So this is something that could change. Still, the reference boards oh, that yes. show you all the moves that yes. you're uh, are available to. Garbage. Garbage. It's just so hard, especially when the timer's going. So he has like a photographic memory. So. He saw it, he knows what everything means and how much they cost. I have to check everything. 
over and over and over again. And then I loot my timers the, the out because I, I don't know how much money I well, spent. The, pro the, problem is, <laughs> the problem is that the, the reference boards kind of show a picture of what things do. And so you can kind of make it out if you know what you're looking at. But they don't, they're not labeled. Like instead of saying run, squeeze, hop, jump, it shows a picture of, so instead of saying squeeze, it shows two circles with an arrow going through it. Mm -hmm. So you have to know that that means squeeze yeah. when you're looking at it. So if you don't really know, if you don't have all the icon, the iconography down, yeah. you're going to look at that reference board and you're going to say, I have no idea what I'm looking yep. at. And you can know all the moves in the game and know how to play and you'll still look at it and go, what? And so it makes it really hard when you need to be like, wait, how much does this cost? You have to reference it really quick and then you can't find it because you're like, wait, I don't know the picture. Yeah. Which picture is showing the push? And they all kind of look a little bit the same because it's just circles and arrows. Yeah. <laughs> so like the reference boards are garbage. That's the only thing in this game that's straight up bad are the reference cards. They need to, they need to instead of showing two arrows or two circles with an arrow, they need to just say squeeze. And then you can at least be like, I want to squeeze through, yeah. squeeze. And then, you can, like, and then look, once really you know it's squeeze, you can look at the picture and it kind of yeah. makes sense that it's squeeze. Yeah. But when it's just a bunch of pictures yeah. and circles and it's just like it gets lost so yeah, that that, I, I get lost. that has to change in my opinion that's like the only thing that has to change um yeah i uh, i'm sorry that was i got way yeah, over, i got really overheated about that for something well, it wasn't i mean it's 81 degrees it's, it here, wasn't so. yeah it wasn't that big of a deal <laughs> i got way too angry about yeah that. you definitely <laughs> did because you just deal with it i just dealt with it yeah you deal with it it's not that bad <laughs> it's really not that bad i'm sorry sorry zolux games I don't know what I was taking I out. I would change it. I, I don't know what I just took out on you, like, but it wasn't raging. fair to you. It wasn't raging. fair to you. <laughs> um, okay. That was all I kind of wanted to say. Okay. So let's uh, score it. Okay. Um, so quick, quick rundown of our scoring system if you're new. Ones are broken games. They shouldn't have been made. Twos are games that are not for us. Threes are good games. They're fine. Um, 3.5s are good games that I want to keep. Fours are great games. I want to keep them. I want to keep playing them. Um, at the end of the day, I could let a four go if you hate it. Fives are games that I want to keep. No matter what, I will make you play probably once a year, at least. So with that being said, I would rate The Fog a three. It is a good game, quality. There are some flaws. There are some good things about it. Uh, I could I could take it or leave it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I was going to give it a three as well, because mm -hmm. it's a game I'd play if you wanted to. Yeah. And I'd, there's nothing really wrong with right. it. It just needs some meat. And that's just for how we play games. Yeah. I could see somebody rating this four. Yeah. Um, or Especially enjoy. if you played it with like a few more people. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you had like, if you had slightly older kids that you wanted to play yeah. with too, um, I could see that too. Yeah. So, yeah. Three. Three from both of us. So six, <laughs> six, six total. That's not bad, of course, for us. She's pretty hard in games. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, just don't give me, what are the ones I don't like with the little people? Area control. Area, oh. War games. Oh. Chem it. So check out The Fog. It's live on Kickstarter right now. They could use all the backing. So if it seemed fun, go back it. It's a, it's a very small campaign. I don't know if you're going to be able to... I don't I don't know what their plans are for availability after Kickstarter. Um, it's one of those smaller campaigns that might not you know really see much more besides Kickstarter. So if it looked interesting, go check it out. I'll put the link in the description. Other than that, thank you for watching. Go out there, show some kindness to those around you. And thanks for watching. We love pumpkin pie. Oh, yeah.